Oh, goodness. It is 3.50 in the morning. I've got to catch a flight to Boston in a few hours, so I guess I better get up and around. Hi friends, my name's Steven. This is my channel, Signal Up Productions, where I wake up way too early to make you videos all about trains. It's the end of January, and that means the Railroad Hobby Show is taking place in Springfield, Massachusetts. So my friend Lee and I, we're going to catch a flight and fly out there, uh, check out things, maybe make a side trip, uh, do some sightseeing, and I thought I'd take you along for this trip. But before we depart, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. While you're at it, let's go ahead and click that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. <sighs> I need coffee. That's better. Alright, let's head up the road to Lee's and get in his car. Alright, I think we're ready to go. I think we are too. Alright, so, so you don't like? Yep. Is, that, is that the best we can do there? We can do that or we can do, where's the other one? Right there. No, not that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. You're never I in this car. I'm now. never in this car. That's well, that's okay. It's okay. So we've got clothes. Check. Okay. We have our plane tickets. Check. We have our sanity. No, we're leaving that here. Okay, we're ready to go. Good deal. Let's do it. Engage. <laughs> we were on the road at 4.45 in the morning on the dot. It's a two and a half hour drive to Lambert Airport in St. Louis, Missouri. And our flight was scheduled to leave at 8.30 in the morning. Reserve parking only, okay? That's well, that's new. Did they not reserve it for us? They did not. Do they not know that we're going to yeah, this do, train show? Do they know? Do they not know who we are? I mean, we're tag trains. Yes, I know. I I probably need to just start heading for the ramp because uh, that's probably the way this is going to work out. We're, we're in a tiny car. We're in a tiny car, and we're probably going to be parked outside. Ah. What the heck? That's bad if it snows. We got here 15 minutes sooner. No, I don't think so. I don't think it would have mattered. <laughs> All these people were already here. There was very little traffic on the road as we drove along, so we actually made really good time. After finding a parking spot, it was just a short walk over to Terminal Number 2. Bags in hand, ready to go. Oh. <laughs> It's a good thing we were a little early. There was quite a long line at security. We made it through without incident and had about 20 minutes to kill before our flight was ready to board. Now, I've never flown on Southwest, but I've heard so many good things about it. We got a pretty good boarding position in the A group. That allowed me to board first and gave me Plenty of opportunity to find a window seat. We pushed back right on time. Southwest is known for their efficient takeoffs. Lambert International Airport sees as many as 270 departures per day. On this day, we were the first taxi to runway 29, so we tore right onto the runway and off we went.
Unfortunately, my window seat only afforded me a nice view of the tops of the clouds all the way to Boston. We passed a couple of airplanes, had a complimentary snack and soda, then I read a copy of the latest issue of Dispatcher's Office from the Operations Special Interest Group, and Lee and I chatted about the upcoming weekend. About two hours later, we were greeted to Massachusetts by flying over Fort Independence in Boston Harbor. Touching down on runway 4 right, the pilot made short time of taxiing over to the gate at Logan Airport. We've made it to Boston. Now we need to dash over and get the rental car so maybe we can catch uh, Amtrak over in Worcester. But it looks like it's gonna be a minute before we get off the plane. We're here for the whole weekend, so we're gonna need our own mode of personal transportation. We jumped on the shuttle and rode it over to the car rental place just outside of the airport terminal. So many choices, but the best deal we found was from Dollar Rental. While the Google reviews were really low for this outfit, we personally didn't have any issue with them or the caller at all, all weekend. Timing was key to getting out of Boston quickly. We knew that if everything went as planned, we could get over to Worcester in time to see the westbound Amtrak. All right, so we're gonna head over to Worcester. We're gonna try and catch Amtrak. I don't know that they've departed yet. I looked at the tracking map and they don't, they don't show on the map yet. They would have departed six minutes ago. So as long as we don't have any traffic hold up, uh, we should be to Worcester just before they get there. That and would then, be great. And then lunch, because I'm starting to get hungry. Lunch is also great. So, Oh my goodness, is that Fenway Park. Oh my goodness. That's on my bucket list. That's it? Right there should be. I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's the, yep, Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox. A friend recommended George's Coney Island in Worcester, and it did not disappoint. A couple of chili dogs later, and we were ready to get to the hotel and hit the sack. All right, so we got up early this morning, had breakfast. Breakfast was yummy. We had a chat with some really fantastic gentlemen uh, who have a Fremo set up here at the the show so we're eager to see what they've got set up uh, we're gonna just look around and see what we see when we get there looking forward to it should be a great experience lots of people lots of drinks it didn't take very long to get from our hotel to the show so we had a few minutes to make a loop around the adjacent train yard it was neat getting to see locomotives from other area short lines that we don't usually see back here in Illinois Parked on a nearby spur just around the corner was this set of cabooses and old passenger cars. I don't know anything about them, but if you've got some information, be sure and leave a comment down below. Note the water. Mm -hmm. The line into the parking area moved quick enough. They had several booths staffed and ready to accept cash or credit card for the $5 per day parking fee. One of the advantages to getting to the show early is finding a good parking spot. All right, so we've paid to park. It's $5 to park. $5 to park. Uh, that's that's unbelievable. Bad. Per day, though. Per day. True. 
and we don't know how close we're going to get to park to the building but we are here kind of early it's 8 32. we are and show just, opens when at nine at nine okay and so if, just for comparative purposes if you want to shine out there a little bit okay. when i came a few years ago and got here about 10 30 11 o'clock i had to park way out there when the overflow and the building starts of course it's like a, a seven building complex and they start right there but it looks like we're going to get parked a lot closer this time we certainly are because that was quite a hike for me all those years ago but it won't be long before people are going to be hiking from out in the corner all right so the guy at breakfast this morning he said this place sees like a twenty-five thousand person attendance that's what he said but that's for the whole weekend we think that's for the whole weekend okay well we should validate those numbers and see uh um, you know if this year will be consistent with that with that assumption and if so yeah this will all be packed it will it certainly will be yes we only had to stand outside for a few minutes before the whistle sounded and the doors opened lines had formed in front of each of the entrance doors to the four buildings around the property even with several thousand people eager to get out of the cold and start scooping up the best deals everyone moved in an orderly fashion First up, we arrived at the Tangent booth in the Young Building. They had tons of their models available for sale, including the latest 4-Bay Coal Hopper. Tangent's business model is focused on releasing new models that are ready to buy the day of the announcement rather than taking pre-orders and having to wait months or years for them to be delivered. There were so many great layouts on display and in every building. I believe I saw layouts for nearly every scale and all of them were worthy of my attention. But I had to be careful in managing my time. I knew that if I let time slip away, I would never be able to see everything the show had to offer. slice of pizza or seven dollars for a basic hot dog nah i've got a cookie in my bag i'll just eat hold me over until dinner time moving into the mallory building things were a bit deceiving atherin and atlas were featured right near the front entrance this room at the front of the building was very small and only had a few layouts and some other vendors all right so last building we're going to dash into the mallory building and see what's over here i think atherin's over here if i remember correctly from Good the map. Name. I haven't seen them yet. I know they're not over in the other building, so let's go check out and see what they have to offer. Sounds Lee and I spent the better part of 20 minutes speaking to John from Atherin's product development team, hearing about the different things they've been working on. I won't spill the beans, but be on the lookout for some really cool innovations they're working on. They're The small room then gave way to a long corridor that opened into a huge main hall filled with the most number of portable layouts I have ever seen under one roof. It wasn't too long before I stumbled across uh, Rapido's booth. I may have left a little bit of drool on the Metra F40 samples. I can't wait for those to hit the shelves. Eight dollars for a two scoop Sunday, but seven dollars for a cheeseburger. So I guess that's a little bit better of a price. The end of the first day was drawing to a close, and we had dinner plans with some friends. So after glancing over one last booth, it was time to head to the restaurant. All right, we're gonna try out this German restaurant here. Mm, maybe. Hi. Hi. Is this the restaurant? Oh, okay. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Yeah, you um, head down the stairs and you'll go out around the, front the corner. Right on Perfect. The Oops, Thank you. Sorry. Okay, well, we got the wrong door, so we're going to try this again. We're going to go to Munich Haas German restaurant here in Chicopee, just outside of Springfield, and enjoy some dinner with our friends. And it's deceiving because that says Munich Haas. Oh, Banquet Hall. Banquet Hall. I can't read. I've got trains on the brain. That's the problem. 
Okay. Well, let's go try this out. Okay. I'm gonna more here. Go. I'll go find him. <laughs> One of the greatest joys this hobby brings me is the friendships that I've made. Having this opportunity to travel around the country and share a laugh with fellow train people will never get old. Never. We were up bright and early, ready to finish up with the train show. My strategy is to eat a big free breakfast at the hotel so I can save uh, some money on food costs at the show and have more money to spend on trains. We just got in the parking area for free. Yesterday they charged us $5 to park and we rolled up to the pay gate today and the girl's like, you're fine, just going in. So either it's a rainy oh, day, rainy day. Oh man, we're gonna get a really we're, good parking spot. Gonna, I like, like this. Spot, yes. Let's check this out. So it's raining. It's like 37 degrees outside and there's not that many people here. We're here later today than we were yesterday. We got in for free to the parking area. Uh, we're getting a better parking spot today. Now if they could just give us free admission tickets, it'll be golden. Yeah. I might yep. have the money to buy that extra car. Absolutely. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to let this guy tell us where to park. Park right there. I love it. Well, well, well. Yeah, this is lots better. Lots better. Okay. Love it. Love it. Let's go inside and check things out. Oh, yes, we're going to get wet really quick. Yeah. I took a close look at the uh, models that Custom Finishing had on their table. You may remember a video that I did a while back where I built one of their crane kits. I have some other of their kits I hope to build soon. Since this hobby has something for everyone, clowns were on hand to engage the younger modelers. The show was fun, and I'm glad I went. We left before the doors closed on Sunday since our next stop was back in Boston. I did manage to see pretty much everything. But if you really want to savor what the show has to offer, you need all day of both days. Dude, that parking lot's slushy already. It's Massachusetts and it's snowing. Yes, it's snowing. Don't they know we're at a train show? Yeah, we can't deal with this. Goodness, these are big snowflakes. You guys know how to make it snow in Massachusetts. Over 22,000 people attended this year's show with 15,000 on Saturday alone. If you plan to visit someday, I recommend taking a pen and paper to note what booth and building you see the different items you may be interested in purchasing. It's Monday morning and we have plans to ride Amtrak's Acela Express south to New York City. Parking in downtown Boston at five o'clock in the morning is not all that convenient and the area felt kind of sketchy. See my comments in the description below. You don't mind that I take the window seat, do you? I had a head oh, plan done it. Fantastic. Well, that wasn't horrible. No, it was not. Thank you. Have a wonderful trip. Okay, we're both good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Have a wonderful we trip. We will. Thanks. Beautiful day out there. <laughs> Thank you. Nothing exciting going on? Day trip to New York day City. Day trip to New York City. Here for the train show and was Springfield yesterday and um, now we're just killing some time. I'm just here for the money. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I know a lot of guys who work for Amtrak and they're all here for the money. I'm just, I'm just here for the money. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. My, uh, I got no black in, in uh, 2015. So my son, my son hates trains because he huh. was two years old when I got no black. Uh, yeah. So he remembers that. Uh, yeah. yeah. That would so be like good. Some of his friends on the trains, he's like, I'm out. I'm out, hey, yeah. Hey, are we looking at any slow orders today down in New York that you know of? What's that? Slow orders? Are we got a lot of track work we're going to go to, or we got full speed today? Oh, there's not much out there. Oh, great. Yeah, Love it. Thank you. I know. I'm not a people person. <laughs> you, you did, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're not. 
Our train made an on-time departure of 6 a.m., and moments later, we were zooming past at breakneck speeds. Our estimated time of arrival to New York Penn Station was 9.40 in the morning. That's an easy 3-hour and 40-minute trip one way. However, in a car driving on Interstate 95, Google Maps says that would take exactly 3 hours and 55 minutes. Yep, you heard me right. That 150 mile per hour train isn't much faster than driving in a car. The difference is the train has to make station stops, and that 150 mile an hour published speed is really only for two small sections of track in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. The rest of the way, it only averaged between 70 and 90 miles per hour. But at least I could stretch my legs, use the bathroom, watch our train go by the live rail cam on YouTube, and stroll down to the cafe for breakfast. Well, at least we have seats to sit on. Yes, uh, got uh, hot coffee. Some official Amtrak napkins. Probably save those. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, official Amtrak plate. Have ever had breakfast at 100 miles an hour? <laughs> but let's see exactly how fast that's right. Perfect sandwich. 111. Yeah, pretty nice. Fancy little box. Same fun, fun, fun. Let us know how your. <coughs> well, Let us know how your sandwich. First, I got to get it over. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to struggle with that. Easy open. Peel yeah, here. Easy open. I believe it. Harvey's got a balance on the seat. <laughs> We get pushed this way. Mm -hmm. We go another way. You're, you're we correct about that. Mm -hmm. Slow down, speed up. Come on. Come on. I guess you've done the sandwich. For microwave food, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Breakfast was actually pretty good, and it was a fun memory to make. But at nine dollars for a microwave sandwich and a small cup of coffee, it'll be a novelty not soon repeated. Traveling over the Hell's Gate Bridge and crossing over the East River signals our arrival to Long Island. Just a few minutes to go and we'll travel underneath the East River to reach Penn Station. Getting to see the gritty urban environment from the safety of the train provides a modeler like myself much needed inspiration for what details would help make a layout feel like it was really adjacent to a major city. Penn Station and the Moynihan Train Hall are in Midtown Manhattan. Not too far away was Times Square. Now I've been to New York City before a couple times, but never to Times Square, so that was kind of neat. Another few blocks to the north and we found ourselves at Central Park. We see all these places in the movies, but it's mind-boggling to be here in person.
This wide open green space in the middle of one of the largest cities in North America does seem out of place. Our next destination was down in the financial district, so that meant taking the plunge and riding the subway. Thankfully, Google Maps was our friend and could tell us what station and train to use to get to where we wanted to go. We used the self-serve ticket machine to purchase a single Metro card, and then we loaded it with just enough money to cover the uh, six rides uh, that we would need to get around. That's three for him and three for me. Then Lee simply swiped the card uh, for me to pass through the turnstile and again for him to pass. Each swipe deducted the fare amount from the card. At the time of our visit, a single ride cost $2.90. And it didn't matter how far you were traveling. So we planned out our day to use a subway to reposition ourselves to different parts of the city, then walk to nearby attractions. Now, I'm a huge movie buff, so any chance I get to visit filming locations, I do. What is this building? Do you recognize it? In part two of this movie, they were scared by a ghost train led by a steam locomotive in an abandoned subway tunnel. If you know this movie, leave a comment down below. We paid our respects at the 9-11 memorial as we made our way down towards Battery Park. Well, we're on the south tip of Manhattan, what's known as the Battery or Battery Park. And I could spin around this way. And I don't know if you can see her out there, Miss Lady Liberty. Yeah, okay. You want to sing a song? For the vlog? For YouTube? No? No. Okay. We should probably get on the subway. That's kind of train related. We're going to go walk across the Brooklyn Bridge now. Yay. Then it was back on the subway for a ride over to Brooklyn. All right. So we're walking around Brooklyn and we're walking under this underpass here on the sidewalk, heading over here to Dumbo. And uh, some stupid birds pooped on me. Good gravy. But they did a nice job of well, too. They aimed. I knew they were they were aiming for me. Son of a gun. Okay. My trip research alerted me to this great pizza restaurant in Dumbo, and it did not disappoint. We had authentic New York style pizza at Front Street Pizza, and you guessed it, it's located on Front Street. Dumbo is an acronym for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. This area was a major industrial area in the early 1900s. That's when John Arbuckle started the J Street Connecting Railroad. Some of the rails have even been preserved in the streets to enhance the history of the neighborhood. Dumbo is a great starting point for anybody wishing to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. From here, it's over a mile walk across the bridge on the footpath, and the bridge is 120 feet above the East River back into Manhattan. Despite the cold and windy day, it was still busy with tourists such as ourselves. I have been a customer of B&H Photo for a very long time. Most of the camera gear I use to produce these videos actually came from them. I really geeked out while roaming the aisles. 
Our day in the Big Apple was drawing to an end. We burned off all the pizza that we had eaten earlier, so it was time to pat the stomach with a hot dog from a street vendor just outside Penn Station. Don't knock it till you try it. Big city food carts are actually pretty good, safe, and low cost for the budget traveler. We ate our food at the Metropolitan Lounge until it was time to board the train for our return trip back to Boston. Thankfully our train was on time because we were both exhausted and ready to get back to the hotel. There wasn't much to see on the dark on the way back, so we arrived in Boston South Station and made a beeline for the car. On our last day of the trip, it was time to once again fill up on free hotel breakfast. We had several hours to kill before the rental car had to be back to the airport. I really did try to find some neat place to rail fan close by, but there is just too much cool history stuff to check out, so we did that instead. First up was this cool Oceanside Lighthouse in Situate, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, it was under re renovations and covered in scaffolding during the time of our visit. But the area was beautiful, though I feel bad for anybody who was boating on the water this day. Also here in town is the southern terminus of the Massachusetts Bay Transit Authority. You might have heard of this next point of interest while you were in grade school. As many as 35 million Americans can possibly trace their genealogy back to the passengers of the Mayflower. The history was neat, but it was just a rock. Lunchtime arrived and we found ourselves at the East Bay Grill and dined on some of the best seafood we could think of. I like a wide variety of seafood, but their seafood casserole had a little bit of everything in it. We returned to Boston to take in a few more sites, then moseyed out to Castle Island to take in Fort Independence. Then across town to the narrow streets of the North End neighborhood, here, you might remember a little story about how a man rode a horse through town yelling, The British are coming! And instructing people at the Old North Church to have two lanterns hung in the steeple to signal that the British were coming by water. While the British came by sea, Lee and myself need to get home by air, so off to Logan International Airport we went, driving a horseless carriage and displaying two lanterns up front. Upon arriving at the airport, we were disappointed to find that our flight had been delayed a few minutes. It actually turned out to be less of a delay than we were expecting. The flight crew assured us that they were expecting a good tailwind, and we should be able to make up most of that time in the air. We had a few planes in front of us, so we sat patiently on runway 9 until it was our turn. Even though it was dark out, the city lit up in the night was almost magical. What better way to bring such a fun and memorable trip to a close? I never pass an opportunity for free snacks or drinks. As soon as that flight attendant came by for our drink order, I was happy to request a nice hot cup of coffee to sip while studying my G Corps Railroad rulebook. Before I knew it, the city lights of St. Louis grew brighter. This town has never looked so good. I was eager to get home to see my family again, but we still had a two and a half hour drive home, and that's once we got in the car. Okay, and, and. oh, I got a ski. <laughs> oh, you got a ski that's been here for five days. It's, and it's gonna be. All right, so let's wrap this video up. We're 
back in St. Louis. We're tired. We're exhausted. We're ready to see our families because we've been gone from home for like five days. Five days. You know, we've done a lot. We've done the city and we've done Boston and we've done... We've done history. Uh, we've history, done trains. trains. Mainly trains. Sightseeing. Sightseeing. Lots of sightseeing. Our feet are killing us. And, and the old man's legs too. Yeah, the old man's legs too. So that's it for this video. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, this vlog was kind of a different thing for my channel, so leave a comment down below whether or not you liked it, or maybe you just want me to stick to just model trains or rail fan videos, or what kind of videos do you want to see me make? I had a lot of fun making this vlog video, so I might do more of these. We'll see. But I'm going to keep them train-centered. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Be sure and share this video with your friends. See you guys on the next fun adventure.